Hey gang, Dan here. Let's do a little tour of the shop, shall we? Yes, I have a new camera and I want to play with it. Here's a shot of my main workbench. You can see there's where I spend most of my time. These are part bins. This is a pegboard. These are my three printers. This is filament storage. These are older projects. This is miscellaneous. Uh, this is old drawings from one of our robots. Uh, this is more parts for 3D printing. This is long-term storage under here. This is bench A, bench B, and bench C. And then this is shelf one, shelf two, shelf three, shelf four. Zero would be on the ground, and as you can see, we don't store anything down there. Moving around the room a little bit, here's my whiteboard, it's lovely. That's access to the garage. We're trying out these new part bins over here. I've got a temporary work table set up to build this robot arm. And then over here, I've got another work table where we do accounting and we do part counting and other things like this. This is my girlfriend's table where she works on her art projects. And then over here, these fine gentlemen are setting up a giant Michelangelo. Coming around the room a bit more, here is the Michelangelo. This is a Michelangelo 5. It's drawing posters like this. This is my manager. He keeps me in on the straight and narrow. His name is Bug. Here's an example of what this machine can do. This is another part of the warehouse. You can see we have all the parts here. These shelves are also numbered and labeled. Uh, every item has its own code and I built the database that keeps all of this stuff so we can keep track of our inventory ourselves. We keep all our packing material that we get from other people so that we can reuse it. Yeah, that's it. Lick your crotch. Um, okay. These are Stewart platforms. We can, they're fun. Out here in the garage, we've got a tool bench, we've got a laser cutter, and over there is going to be a CNC machine, and I just put in this new electrical panel and had to dig a trench outside out to the power box so that I could get this. Crush, crush, crush. From here you can see another pegboard, and I'm below it here, down here, I have ABS storage. This is old 3D print material. We don't have a recycler yet. This is the main printer we use for paper stuff. Uh, behind this bench, I keep all the scrap wood from the laser cutter. I have a fireplace, so why not? This is a spare laser tube. The rest of this is camping gear, nobody cares. Um, I like using this vacuum. You may have seen this connector recently. I use this to get a fine nozzle so that I can clean my car. This is the better way of doing things, where these have a label printed that's standing up inside. This, ugly. Hard to remove, and when you do try to, it leaves residue. Gross. Here I've got the Jigsaw, which you may have heard about. It is a jigsawing robot that was connected to Twitch. Nobody cared. Maybe I didn't market it enough, so uh, it sort of sits here doing nothing. I guess I could use this to cut, except that I find when I pull this all the way to one end, you see it's pressing against that end. Damn thing isn't square. So watch for that. If you try and bind Inventables X-Carve, it probably isn't going to cut square. They said they would send me a new gantry that would fix this, and then I never heard from them again, and they stopped replying to my emails. Moving on. Here's another example of things you can draw in, when, with the CMYK on the Michelangelo. Welcome to my gallery of failure. This is a Michelangelo 3. This is a Michelangelo 1. Maybe a two? I don't know, it's old. This is a czar plotter. These are originally built by a guy in California, but someone asked us if we could support it in our firmware, so I had to build one. This is the 6E from last year. We took the bearings out of here to use in the new model, and now we've got a lot of motors we can reuse. This is the control box for that 6E. Here's a moment you can take a screenshot and admire it later. We had, uh, we had some of the drivers stuffed in this space as well. That was kind of neat. This is the arm before that. This uses the same uh, magnetic rotation sensors. You see the magnet here, and then this cap goes over top. And these pins were kept getting damaged in shipping, so we're working on new solutions for that. This is a 3D printer. I paid someone like two bitcoins to make. This is back before bitcoins were worth something, but uh, it never got finished. Here's another Stewart platform. Apparently I was showing it to someone. This is Spidey. This is my first robot. Yeah, yeah, this is my first robot. 
He's a good boy. He's got an old brain in him and they don't make that no more. Maybe one of these days I'm gonna make a PCB that does that right. This was another attempt at making a metal arm. It stopped here because these gearboxes are 250 bucks a pop. Plus the metal was super annoying to work with. This is my first Delta robot. Well, what's left of it. This was $600. Yeah, that's why I'm getting my own machine because this is about $10 in aluminum. This was a, my first attempt at a cycloid gearbox. My Christmas lights. If I put them in a tree, I have the loudest tree on the street. But when I plug this in as it is, it plays Tetris. You know, it's got a little joystick here. Clicking on the wheel in the center is how you rotate a piece. Some UBC students made this for me as part of the capstone project. This piece is meant to be repeated, so this is the same as this. And then there'd be three sections like this to get you the full motion. But each of these sections only moves about 15 degrees. Maybe I just didn't explain very good. Oh, don't forget to check us out on Instagram where we post nearly daily stuff. Check our blog weekly for our summaries that include some descriptions you don't get anywhere else. Little insider notes. And of course we got a Patreon. So you know the drill. You like, you share, you subscribe, and I will see you next time.